Okay, we now proceed to the second part of our uh, basic routing lab. So the second part is we connect two different networks. We will connect this network going to that network. Okay, so what's going to happen is that all of these devices can go here and all of these devices can go to the other side that's our next activity okay so let's start so the end result we want is both p1 and p2 to ping everybody inside of this network okay so to achieve that let's do static routing okay so so far all of these devices can ping each other and this one we don't know so let's find out okay so remember rule one so be, let's visit t1 check its ip address show ip route connected i include letter c so notice that it has three ip addresses basically this one okay uh d1 doesn't know anything about the network here so it's time to teach d1 and d2 okay so notice that to go anywhere okay all d2 needs to use is this address for d1 and for d2 things should go in this direction and d d1 for this direction basically to go every direction okay so we will now be in introducing what we call default route okay default route versus static routes okay that will be for d1 and d2 okay to answer the question look at d1 and d2 okay the routes they need to know are four routes basically this one they don't know about those that one this one this one and this one they don't know about zero four eight and one two three oh it's just three routes they don't know about those three routes d1 and d2 let's give it a try we go to d1 we ping 10 1 1 1 we get nothing okay if we go to d2 type ping 10 1 1 let's say 9 we don't get anything okay so we can make three separate static routes or we can just make one default route let me show you normally for d1 you'd have to make this routes this is static routes okay get one more get rid of the last one get four and eight okay to go to here we need to go inside four five okay so we change this to 10 1 4 5 4 5 10 1 4 5 okay now for d2 they have the same routes that they need to ping but the gate what would be different this will be 449 Okay, so these are the static routes that we need to tell them. Now there is a bit of issue now. When we paste this in D1 and in D2, these two devices cannot go, cannot ping these addresses still because R1, R2, and R3 doesn't know that they exist. 
so need to configure them separately let's give it a try 10 1 1 1 see they are not pingable so in order for us to have a complete connectivity we need to route all of this inside show IP route connected pipe include C yes we need to connect all of this so with R1 R2 and R3 needs to know about this routes so we need to put all of it this one this IP this IP and this IP too okay like everything you see in this circle needs to be routed including 4 6 and 4 10 we need to add those two yeah okay for R4 things are a lot simpler because R4 is basically connected to 4, 6, and 4, 10. So we, this is eliminated. And this is just the three routes R4 needs to know about. So let's convert this into the actual command that we need to paste. Okay? So this is going to be a lot of static routes. So you need a lot of time. So for R1... It's going to be 5 static routes it's going to be a lot of editing 10 1 4 4 yeah 10 1 4 8 10 2 1 0 10 2 2 0 and the odd looking address 192.168.1.128 this is a slash 27 so it's going to be 224 that would be for R1 and if you take a look at R1 all the routes go to 1.2 okay if you're asking if this is what a normal a normal network engineer's job is I would say this is like 5% of the task because there are a lot more different kinds of routing so for R2 commands are very similar to we just need to, need to get to change the first half this is 1.6 okay so we change that to 1.6 there we go okay things are looking good for r3 this one this guy everything goes inside that 10 10 10 10 10 and finally for R4 for R4 R4 actually needs to choose which of these two has uh, that will be the first gateway all right so let's select R1 oh this is a good time to discuss the metric R4 actually has two choices to get to those VLANs, R4 can either go to 4.6 or 4.10. It leads to the same destination. Okay? So in order to have those two, we're going to define a primary and secondary. Okay? Primary routes. 
as well as the secondary routes. Backup routes, if you will. Okay, so the primary routes would go primarily to port at six. What's the backup route is 410. Just change it here. Now, to, to define the primary link, we'd have to put a 1 in here. And for the backup, let's give it a route of not 2. Normally, you would assign something in the range of 10. So this is called the metric cost. It tells you who is the primary and who is the backup. You can use any number you want, but when the industry says that I should jump by 10. And the good news is, if you are a primary route, you don't have to put a one in there. It's automatically added. So let's see if things are looking good for our mini network, shall we? Okay, so we go to D1. Type this to D1. Type this to D2. Good job. Type all of these five routes towards R1. All of these routes to R2. This routes to R3. Lastly, the two routes to R4. Okay? So, let's give it a try. We go to R1, fingers cross, crossed, and prayers. Let's go. Yep. They are pinging the routes inside here. Five and six. That's a success as well. So things are good. Now, regarding our primary and backup link, we go to or here in, in, in R4. When we type show IP route static, notice that you only see how many routes are there. So we have what, six, six, and six, and 10, and 10, and 10. We do not see the routes going to 10 at all it's because the routes at 10 are just backup routes okay let me explain that if we trace route going to 192.168 one dot let's say 129 the route says 4.6 if we want to go to 130, it goes to 4.6 because R4 is preferring the primary route. Now, how do we have R4 use the second route? It's simple. We kill the link to the primary route, which is This one, it's interface E10. Let's do it. We shut it down and we check do show IP route static. Notice now it becomes 10. Going to this network now says 10 as the first hop. If we do no shot, wait for a few seconds, it now goes to 6. The reason is that we have given this a metric of 10, wherein the primary one was given a 1. Okay? So if we shut this down again, R1 would be oh I'm sorry R4 would be forced to use the 10 
to go to 130 okay but if we no shut the interface and wait for a few seconds it will now be forced to use the six okay so that explains the sort of primary and backup link okay so that's our lab for today before we end let's give a default route assigned to p1 and p2 but config t ip route 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. now normally you give this default route to client computers okay client computers are computers at the end of the network okay basically they are what do you call end devices so there's no way except to go to here or here okay so let's do it let's give that IP address so the, the gateway for um, P1 is 10 2 1 1 that would be D1 give that an IP address of 1 uh, 10 2 1 1 0 1 Okay, do a no shot, do an end for V2. We give this address, we do 102, and P2 would prefer to go to 1.2 as the gateway. Okay, so we go to P1, we just check the neighbor, yeah, that, that's correct, and P2's neighbor would be show cdp neighbor neighbor would be e10 so i need to change this copy press enter good job now we type show ip route static so this is called the default route which means you can go anywhere using this app so we can ping let's just say uh first the different VLANs pingable yeah okay the other routes okay we'll troubleshoot that at a later time but for now that's 90% of our static routes thank you